Hi, we are here to discuss about uh, breast cancer and breast cancer awareness. Uh, this is Dr. Heepa Gurku. She is a radiation oncologist at the Mazumdar Shah Medical Center. And I'm Dr. Akshita Singh. I'm a breast cancer surgeon and I am also associated with the Mazumdar Shah Medical Center. Uh, breast cancer is really, really common as we know that the incidence of breast cancer, uh, if you compare to the West, which is about one in eight women, if you look at the incidence of breast cancer in India, it is about one in 30 women in their lifetime will get affected uh, with the disease. Uh, as compared to rural areas, urban areas are afflicted to a larger degree and uh, awareness is still an issue with the women. Um, maybe because it is of the societal pressures, it is because of uh, uh, inadequate knowledge, but women often do not come to the hospital, they do not come and discuss their issues with us, uh, they come in pretty late stages. And if we can avoid that, um, uh, we will really be able to save a lot of lives. Uh, what what do you think are the risk factors for breast cancer and uh, uh, how do we screen for breast cancer, Heba? Uh, so basically, uh, breast cancer is one of the can cancers where screening has a very important role. Screening is where we do the test in, a, in women who actually don't have symptoms. So the need for the screening is that we can detect cancer at a stage where the cure rates are high, the so survival is high and the treatment modalities may be limited in them. So what we can do is first to check the risk uh, risk in a woman about the cancer. So there are various risk factors for, uh, for uh, women for the breast cancer. The main is increasing age. So with the increasing age, the risk of breast cancer increases. Female gender is in itself a risk factor. Then there is a risk of uh, if uh, anyone has a strong family history or if anyone has a previous history of uh, breast cancer or ovarian cancer, history of uh, exposure to radiation at an early stage to chest for some other diseases. So these are the main high risk factors which may increase the risk of having breast cancer in a woman. Then we have other reproductive factors like women who start their period at an early age or women who have menopause at a later stage or women who are having kids at a later uh, age of their lives. So these all, uh, uh, all factors increase the risk in females. Now, the screening guidelines at present tell us that up to 40 years of age, uh, women don't need to be screened. Yes, there has to be awareness about breast, breast cancer, but uh, as such, there uh, is no need to go for any screening modality. But above 40, they can go for a mammography, which is the main modality of screening. We do a screening mammography, it's nothing, it's an x-ray of a breast. and. Uh, in those uh, the women who undergo mammogram, we can actually detect any abnormality, any masses, any distorted architectures way before they actually present with symptoms. And this can actually help us to uh, diagnose these tumors at an early stage when the chances of cure are really high. So are there any other investigations that you know you want to do in case a lady says you know I don't want to get a mammogram done? It's so painful. yes there are other uh, we can get an ultrasound done in some cases MRI breast can also be done in especially in the women who are at a higher risk who have a strong family history or strong um, uh, strong personal history there is also there are also women who may have certain genetic mutations and those women may be at a higher risk of developing breast cancer in those cases we can use those modalities also to screen them and to detect the breast cancer at an early age. Yeah, so it doesn't always have to be It doesn't painful. always have to be, yeah. It doesn't have to be painful. It is a simple x-ray of a breast. So um, in terms of uh, diagnosis, when a lady actually comes to us uh, with a breast lump, I think the first thing that we have to remember is that not all lumps are cancerous. You know, it's a general tendency, women will walk into the OPD and they are absolutely convinced that what they have in the breast is actually uh, cancerous. It doesn't have to be like that. Uh, the younger you are, the chances of you having cancer is really, really low. It's in, in all likelihood, the lump in the breast is non-cancerous. So uh, what do you do? What, what happens when you actually come into a breast clinic? The first and the foremost thing that's done is uh, women are examined. A thorough examination is done. You kind of get an idea of what we are dealing with. It is supplemented with, uh, like Dr. Heba said very correctly, either a mammogram or an ultrasound. Occasionally, if, uh, still in doubt, we may get an MRI of the breast done. Um, they are all essentially painless investigations. Once this is done, uh, to confirm the diagnosis, um, 
as either cancerous or non cancerous we may then go ahead with uh, what is called as a needle test uh, a needle test is essentially an outpatient procedure it is done uh, you don't have to get admitted we put in a small needle take out a few cells put it on a slide get it reviewed with the pathologist and usually you know within a few hours you'll get an answer as to whether uh, the disease looks cancerous or not uh, nowadays we also do what is called as a core biopsy which is a slightly more elaborate procedure where a little bit more tissue as compared to a needle test is taken out but again these are outpatient procedures they are extremely painless and uh, these three things actually form the cornerstone of any uh, diagnosis of a breast lump once the diagnosis is confirmed as yes you know it is cancerous uh, we may then ask for additional investigations to see whether the cancer has spread to any other part of the body uh, we can get an ultrasound of the tummy or you know a ct scan or a pet scan um, and these are all essentially done to see whether it has uh, spread to any other part of the body or not um, so uh, what are the what are the stages that you commonly see these women suppose a lady is diagnosed with breast cancer what are the likely stages that the lady suppose you know comes in with uh, so once a woman is diagnosed with uh, breast cancer the next stage is to determine uh, what is the stage of the breast cancer because that will not only determine her prognosis her survival that will also determine what will be the treatment that we, she is undergoing so mostly we have three uh, there are different staging uh, there are uh, stage uh, so there can be a early breast cancer a locally advanced breast cancer or it can be metastatic. Metastatic means when the cancer has already spread from breast into other organs of the body. Now early breast cancer is when the cancer is limited to the breast and has not spread to nodes or uh, maybe less than three nodes. While the uh, locally advanced breast cancer will be when the cancer has spread, it is involving locally maybe the skin of the breast, the muscle of the breast, or there is an extensive involvement of the nodes in axilla or lower neck. And metastatic happens when the cancer has already spread to other organs of the body, which most commonly are bone. It can be liver, it can be lung, or it can be brain. Now, our treatment always depends upon what stage the patient comes to us. Uh, so, for the early breast cancer, as a surgeon, how do you deal for with the next step after the diagnosis? Yeah, so um, for early breast cancer, usually what we do is... Um, uh, conservation is the key, right? So, uh, radicality in terms of surgery is now a thing of the past. Um, you, uh, you know, earlier it used to be the more radical the surgery, the better the survival, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, the trend is moving towards more and more of conservation, which, which means essentially that you do not need to remove the breast. Um, I cannot emphasize on this point enough. Uh, women do not come to the clinic uh, for the fear that you know the breast will be removed if it's diagnosed as breast cancer. Well, that is not true. If it is early stage, we can definitely save the breast. We can save it safely. And uh, this common misconception that if you remove the breast, the cancer is not going to come back, or if you remove the breast, you know you're not going to require any further treatment is all completely. It's they're all myths, and they they really need to be discarded. So. Um, lady comes in with early stage breast cancer um, it's got two parts of you know the surgery has got two essential parts one is surgery for the breast where we can only remove the tumor and of course then comes the second part of surgery for the lymph nodes again uh, it, it must be in your experience you must have seen women who have undergone surgery for breast cancer when they actually you know if you see them you'll realize that um, on the side of surgery that particular arm has a lot of swelling and that's called as lymphedema uh, this is a side effect of breast cancer surgery, but again, this is a side effect of extensive surgery done in the axilla or the armpit where all the lymph nodes are removed. Uh, nowadays, again, this is not done. All lymph nodes are not removed. We do what is called as a sentinel node biopsy. We check whether there is any spread to the lymph node or not. And if there is no spread to the lymph node, just like, you know, you are saving the breast, you save the lymph nodes also in the armpit. Uh, along with this, of course, we've got, uh, uh, you know, we've got a ton of uh, plastic surgical procedures that can be done. Uh, in Sometimes, you know, occasionally women don't want the breast, even though it's a very early stage. Uh, for personal choices, they decide to remove the breast. In that case, you know, we can do plastic surgical procedures. A new breast can be made from scratch, um, which more or less matches the opposite side. And uh, uh, again, early detection is the key. Uh, 
what about radiation i mean everybody talks about uh, so women know that if you save the breast you have to take radiation but you know what exactly is radiation and what are the changes that have happened over the past few years in terms of radiation uh, so, uh, radiation uh, can be indicated at any stage of breast, at early, at locally advanced, at metastatic, but the purpose of radiation may differ at all the three stages. For early stage, mostly the uh, radiation is a part of breast conservation. If you go for breast conservation surgery, you have to undergo radiation. Previously, radiation used to be a 25 settings, a five-week treatment. The patient has to come daily to hospital and go back home as long as there is no admission required. But this has changed and now the uh, treatment schedule has shifted from five week to three to four week, which has actually increased the compliance of the females. Now, in early breast, there is now an, another modality which may be suitable for a small subset of patients, which is called the accelerated breast radiation. This is indicated in patients who have very small uh, breast lesion, maybe two centimeter and without any lymph nodes on surgery. Now, in those cases, we can only give 10 sittings twice a day uh, for five days and we can be done with the radiation. Now, for that also, we have different modalities. We can do an external radiation or we can do a brachytherapy. In brachytherapy, we place the catheters at the time of surgery alone uh, at the, in the tumor bed. And after surgery, for the next five days, we can give these 10 settings twice a day and finish the radiation. So the patient does not have to go for a four week or five week radiation after undergoing breast conservation surgery, so which is a very good for the patient. Now, the same thing we can, uh, the uh, radiation in locally advanced cases where patient has undergone mastectomy. Now, mastectomy, if it is an early stage, patient usually don't need radiation, but then there are certain indication where if the nodes come positive after surgery or the tumor size is very big or the margins are positive, then patient may still require radiation in those cases. We have uh, different techniques in that. We have 3D CRT, IMRT, VMAT. The most uh, important thing in radiation is uh, in the left-sided breast uh, cancer cases where the heart is very close to the chest wall. Now, in those cases, we try to reduce the radiation to heart and lung as much as possible. So we have other techniques for that, like activate breath control, where we treat the patient during breath control. So by this, we are reducing the radiation to breast uh, to heart and that helps to reduce any morb morbidity because of radiation to heart in future years. Okay, so is radiation painful? I mean, that's a common question. No, the pa uh, radiation are. basically is nothing. These are x-rays. Uh, there are other types of radiations or some uh, subatomic particles like electron or proton. But in most of the centers, it will be just x-rays. The x-rays that you use for diagnostic purposes, for CT, these are high energy x-rays which are used for the treatment. So most of the time, patient will not feel anything. Yes, they may develop uh, certain side effects after maybe two or three weeks. And these are usually... Uh, some skin reaction like redness or darkening of skin which usually goes away in two to three uh, two to three months the late side effects which i already told is mostly maybe related to uh, lung and heart but the incidence is again very very less so uh, breast radiation otherwise is very safe there is no invasive uh, procedure there is no uh, pricks or needles patient comes every day for maybe 30 minutes or one hour take radiation and go back home right so, you know, occasionally you'll have patients who come in with, you know, one single lesion in the lung or one single lesion in the liver. And um, a lot of places they tell you, you know, you need to do surgery to take it out. But uh, you have the option of treating it with radiation. Yes. So like we have one more option uh, in patients who have where the disease has spread outside the breast, but has gone only one site. Maybe it has not spread to all the organs. It has spread to one organ and there is only one single lesion. Well, those patients can have a better survival. And those patients can actually undergo a uh, technique called SBRT to those lesions. Now, this, this technique helps to give radiation only in three to five settings, depending upon the size. And a uh, patient does not need to go for surgery for these uh, those lesions, and it can give a very good results. Right. So, you know, these are these are very specialized things that, that may not be available everywhere, but if they are, uh, they're really beneficial yes, yeah, to the because patient. Because they are non-invasive and patient does not want to go for surgery and invasive uh, procedures again and again. Yeah. So we have other modalities that can take care of all these things. Right. 
so um, you know this was more or less early but again advanced we follow the same sort of pattern we give we give chemotherapy to kind of shrink the tumors we then go ahead with surgery again surgery you don't particularly need to remove the breast if you've got a good response to chemotherapy you know sometimes the tumors are really huge and the general tendency is if it's a big tumor you need to do surgery to take out the breast well that's not the case if it's a large tumor it's uh, amenable to giving um, chemotherapy or maybe targeted therapy that really shrinks the tumor downsizes it and eventually when you do operate again you do not need to remove the breast um, so what do you think is I mean um, uh, how good is survival in breast cancer that's something that you know everybody asks us and it's so, so uh, early breast cancer is one of the few tumors which has got a very good survival so uh, yes that is why the screening and coming to an oncologist as soon as you find any symptom is very very important because the treatment modalities you can even detect these cancers at a precancerous stage where you may uh, only need a, uh, a surgery and may not even need a radiation in some cases or chemotherapy in some cases so you can actually avoid the cost as well as uh, other undergoing uh, other treatment modalities by coming early to this so uh, yes early breast cancer will have a very good survival and uh, patients should come as soon as they take uh, any abnormality in the breast to the surgeon yeah and I think there's one more thing that, that really needs to be brought forward is I think breast cancer is one of the few cancers where even if you are a stage four, it's not end of the road. Um, you know, it's not it's not game over. It's not um, a lack of treatment options. You have a lot of treatment options even if you're stage four. Um, a lot of patients think that, you know, uh, this is the end. They don't really have treatment. But um, there are a significant number of treatment options in terms of chemotherapy, hormone therapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, um, CDK4-6 inhibitors. There's a, there's a vast trove of treatment that's available uh, for patients and uh, uh, I guess the the main motto is that come to the hospital as soon as you pick up something uh, more likely than not it's cancer and if it is cancer it is immensely curable so um, thank you so much Dr. Hiba for this valuable session that you've had thank with you us. Dr. Akshita for having me thank you